So today is the day we're going to turn in assignment four. You need three components to turn it in. So I'm going to go to where I post my final logos. And I've been turning things in as I go, which is a good professional practice. It acknowledges the deadline. It makes sure you get something in by the deadline. The deadline is tonight at 11.59 PM. The first thing that's required is a refined sketch. So this is taking the best sketch approach that you did in your thumbnails, in your proving ground, that maybe some people commented on and gave you some encouragement for. So I chose this approach, the dynamic approach. But then my refined sketch was a little different than that. My refined sketch had to show how it could be made with just black shapes. Because when we didn't tend to do thumbnails and quick sketches, we tend to, to use a lot of outlines. And so, if we move on from there, once we pick an approach, then we post a refined sketch. And that's enough to acknowledge the deadline, right? So by 11.59 tonight, hopefully everyone will have at least one of these components. It's good to start with the refined sketch. Once you have that, we can take it into Adobe Illustrator. And we've been showing in the last few videos, that was before spring break, how to trace these things into vectors. So these vectors are made not with pixels, but with points. I did a very efficient one using mostly straights and a few curves. And in this example, I just took the crown shape here, which had a few curves, but mostly straights, and I just made it the wing. And where we left off, I was going to try a variation with kind of a skull head instead of the solid head. And I can show you how we do that. An earlier one, when I was showing you the pen tool, shows the wing that's curvy. So I want to show you that as a black shape vector, you still have a lot of options. And so one of those options, I can actually clip this wing. I'll show you some tools to do that. Add it to this Illustrator file and give myself an alternate wing to use, even though I like the finish of most of this. So I might soften the beak a little bit. So the first thing you got to do, especially when it's after spring break and we're, we're getting back into it, is you want to understand what all of your different vector paths are. I have a, a filled in white path right here. And I can use different tools like the pencil tool. To extend that, I can use different tools like the smooth tool to average it out and soften it. If I go to the small selection tool, I can select different paths. This one's a gray path. This one's a, a hot, hot pink path. And I can use that smooth tool. As long as I can see the anchors, I can affect change on those different paths. If I want to do it to multiple paths at once, I have to select them. Select them all. Now the smooth will average out the curves, but if I want to redraw it, I'll use the pencil tool, but I can double click on the pencil and set it to be more smooth or more accurate. So it doesn't capture every wave in my hand. So something like that, softening it out. There's a little bump there, so I might go to my small selection tool. The shortcut for going back to the last selection tool you used is Command. And I'm going to use the pencil tool. and redraw this curve so it fills it in. And remember, because I set it to smooth, notice how smooth that all is. And once I like that, I might turn that off and say, oh, there's a, a circle here I want. So I'm going to make a new layer, which are just organizational. And I'm going to use the shape tool, shape ellipse. And I am going to create, holding down shift, a circle. And 
and I'm going to fill that with black. Remember, each path can have an outline stroke, but we want to turn those outline strokes off and have it be instead empty with the X or the red bar through it. And it has a fill color, and we want that fill color to be solid black. So now it's there. It doesn't look like it's there because it's, it's something I cut out from the shape before. But if I put that white shape underneath it, this is the alternate I was thinking of doing. But let's replace that wing. And let's do it in a way that's responsible. So I'm going to take this path, which has that wing in it, and I'm going to go to Edit Copy. And then I'm going to create a new layer on top. I'm going to lock the layers underneath so I don't accidentally paste into the wrong place. And then I'm going to say edit paste in place. Not just paste because then it will offset it. I want it exactly in the same place. Paste in place. So now you see how it's orange instead of gray. Turn off the gray one because there's the gray one underneath. Turn on the orange one, select it. I'm going to cut this wing out. So how can I do that? I'm going to use the eraser tool. And I'm not sure if I've shown you the eraser yet. The problem with the eraser is you can adjust it for size, angle, pressure sensitivity, all of that. It's actually helpful to be able to, to use your tablet. We're going to be doing this later with our spot illustrations. So even if I can set it to be a huge brush like this, if I hit really lightly, it will do it less and less. That's a little too big for this size. But what I'm going to do, instead of trying to erase away the whole ring, I'm just going to separate it from what I had before. So I'm just going to cut it like this. And now that it's separated, you see how that eraser created a new path on each side of those fill paths. So they're still both complete paths. Then I can use my small selection tool, select this, remember this is all on a copy, and then just delete. So now I have an empty shell waiting for a wing. Then I can go to that earlier Illustrator file where I had the wing. I can do the exact same thing again. Select it all, Command C, make a new layer, lock the layer underneath, and then paste in place, edit, paste in place. Then I can use my eraser. Really delicately cut it out. Then copy it, Command C, go back to this file on a new layer. I like to use new layers for this kind of thing. And then edit, paste in place. and use my large selection tool and bring it in. Now there's a slight variation in this that I don't like, which I can fix with the pencil tool. So right now these are two overlapping paths. I can see if there's any other shapes I want to mess with. But no, that all looks pretty clean. That's what I have in mind. Okay, so there's a bunch of house cleaning to do now. I'm missing the crown. Where's the crown? Right? Everything is its own path. So let's find it. It's not on this. So it must be here. There's the crown. So I'm going to copy that and move that up onto this layer. Paste in place again. So you can make as many copies as you need. Okay, now I'm going to select all of this and show you something, because this isn't a finished logo, black and white logo. Because if I move it off to the gray, you can see how I've lost some of what I've done, though I, I do like it like that. In fact, I might want to just have this as a variation I can save too. So I Command Z, I go back here, I lost the white head, because what I need to do is make that white head and that black I part of this whole thing. So just to remind you how to do that, first thing I want to do is merge this wing into this body. So I'm going to select that 
hold down Shift and Command, and select the body. Now they are overlapping. And I can see that in the paths. You know, it's this one. You can see it's selected. And then it is the wing, which is at the top, which is selected. Then I'm going to go to Window, Pathfinder. You want to make sure you see this tool. I have it in my sidebar here. And we want to add these two together, merge them, unite. So we just did that. Okay, the problem is it united them. Make sure I still have my white layer somewhere. I do, it's just locked. So now I need to bring this up above it so it's cutting out from what was united. Okay, and then same thing with the eyeball. Remember, it's just like cutouts of paper. If I want to cut out that whole thing from this, I need to know what layers I'm doing that to. So, it will make sense when you're doing it for yourself. I can turn on the crown, lock it, that's good. I can turn off the eyeball, lock it, I don't need it yet, though I can put it up above so I'm reminded of it. I'll need to add that in later. What I now want to do is subtract this from what's underneath it, from this. This is a solid single shape now, I just united them, but I want to subtract Actually, I might want to copy that because that's a good option too. And actually, since this is a good option, I might save this as an EPS right now because this works. There's no white shapes in this. There's no strokes. I'll just show you really quick. And I didn't grab the crown, but I could grab the crown. You know, it's all one clean shape. So... What I can do is turn off the sketch, don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna save this, just save my progress in Illustrator, but then I'm gonna save as to my computer. This is gonna be important for making it print ready as an Illustrator EPS format. I'm gonna just move that to the desktop. So that's my first finished black and white one with this new version, with this new wing different than what I posted into Canvas before. Now I want a version with that white head. So what I do is I copy this. You can have as many of these kind of vector copies as you like. It's good to have it built in in your layers and then you just turn them on and off as you need. And then I'm gonna edit, paste it in place. There it is. And now I'm gonna subtract from this one the white head. So I have to select them both, hold down Shift and Command. Now they're both selected. And now with the Pathfinder options, just like I merged the wing with the body, I'm now gonna delete this white shape from the black shape. And that's just subtract or minus. Okay, so now it's all cleanly one. It's now hot pink. Now I just have to add the eye in, turn that on. And now if I unlock the crown, it will allow me to select it. I'll just show you how I test it. It's good to do this to make sure you don't have any white shapes. There's my logo. All right. Now with all of those settings, I'm going to say File, just Save, Update, because I've got all the potential in here. And then Save As onto my computer as an EPS, but I want a slightly different name. So this is alternate logo two. So often when you design logos, you're doing several variations, even though you just have to pick one to submit that you think is the best. And that's why logo design can be a real pain because even though they're simple shapes, very often there's just subtle variations that you take to the client and you they generate another 50 variations, you take those to the client, so on and so on until it's exactly what they want. Yeah. So, no. When you post it to Canvas, Canvas is an online site, right? You could attach an EPS file, but you can't view it without a, a program like Illustrator, right? So, what we're going to do is now make this EPS into a smart object layer in Photoshop that we size to be perfectly print ready. So, you need the EPS to do that.